Welcome to track number 8 of Advancing in Pegamos. But like Jesus said to Martha, that uh, Jesus said to Martha that Mary has chosen the right thing. And you make yourself busy about so many things. And that's the reality. It's a common thing. Many women make themselves extra busy about things that are not necessary. You get what I'm saying? And they always have a reason. Over here we did this. Over here we did this. Over here we did this. I'm sick of those kind of things. But those things, they irritate me when I hear them. Because it is as though somebody is a mad person. He doesn't know anything about what life is about. I have three children. My wife is expecting a fourth one. Yeah. And, no, 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 no. I'm making a point, please. And I'm saying that I've been through all these things. And I know what it's about and it's a rebellious spirit that anytime advice is given to you always think in your mind you don't know over here this over here that over here this over here we have heard all these things in the end somebody say ah you were right so i'm just saying this to 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 quench certain things and say that it's important that we are all here when we start tomorrow morning i don't want that when we start at 6 a.m then half of them are coming at 10 o'clock and so on it's not a right it's not the right way amen you will say amen amen Okay, now listen carefully. Why did the prodigal son go out of his father's house like that? Because it looked like an easier way of life. Because he just asked his father for what his father has. His father gives it to him easy. (laughs) Straight away, he is at the top of the ladder. It looks quick. Quick. In a moment, he is not a son in a house, but he is an owner, personally, of everything. And looks very quick and very fast. Thirdly, it looks even like a nicer way. Because the Bible says that the prodigal son wasted his living, wasted uh, wasted his substance on riotous living. So, he, he had a nice time with a lot of girls, And a lot of pleasure went on and he was really blessed or happy at the end of the day. So it looked as though he was even better off than his father's second child who was still stuck up in the house and was not as free and did not have things to spend. So it looked as though he was going faster to a high place. Now there are many people, pastors, church members, etc., they think when people leave churches and they, are going, they go to other churches, they often think that it's a fast way out of this strange, foolish circumstance. This funny Pastor Robert, he's too authoritative. Uh, he likes to suppress us. And so we are going to a church where we are free and where we are not oppressed and where we can do in liberty, we can serve God. And they think that they are going. But actually... You see, that's why when we say deception, it's like there is a lie which is told to you and you believe the lie. And then with time you find out that you've been lied to and you believe the lie. That is what a deception is. It is not a quick way. It is not an easy way. It is not a fast way. There is nothing like a quick way or an easy way or a fast way. There's nothing like that. For all the years that I have been around, there is nobody who has taken that route who has ended up at where he thought he was going to get to quickly. People who have left us as a church. You can go and join in any other church. If you leave this church or even if you leave another church to come to this church thinking that you are leaving that church because that church has got a foolish pastor who wants to control us. And I'm going to Lighthouse. And when I go to Lighthouse, I will quickly be able to be established. And everybody in the church is going to respect me. I can become the church's accountant. I can become the whatever and so on. Or the music director. There is nothing like that. At least in my church, I'm not going to become the music director in my church. There's a young man. I met him outside of a gate on Sunday. And he was saying, so I want to be the music director. I want to come. I said, look, my friend. Just join the church. So he asked me, so give me an average time. If I join the church now, by what time do you think I will be a a, a music director? I said, there's nothing like that here. I can't give you a time or quick uh, track. There's no fast track 
uh, 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 approach to becoming the music director of the church. And I said that you are even joining the church with the wrong motive. He said, I'm a very musical person. I am very gifted. I I said, I don't mind about all your gifts. Thank you for your gifts. But you've got to join and you've got to go through the normal processes. There is nothing like a quick way into anywhere. Many years ago, when this church began, I had some people who were assisting me. In particular, a brother. And sometimes, you see, when you are with somebody and you are teaching the person, if I don't say, I am your father, it does not mean that you, 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 shouldn't, you shouldn't see it and know it. Because you are not with a dominating person who will say, my daughter Mary, my daughter Yemesi, my son Imarus. Really, I don't often call people my daughter and my son. Sometimes I say, but not, it's not a common thing. The fact that even the person is not trying to show you always, but is even leaving you to know and to see for yourself what is the relationship, does not mean that you should take it for granted. He used to lead where... Many people think that Reverend Saki was my first assistant. Reverend Saki was not the first assistant to me in this church. He's the second person to assist me in this ministry. The first person to assist me in this ministry is no more here. Because at a point, it looked as though it was whatever. I don't know what reason they were always criticizing me. I always have some, always something to say about me. One day I just sat and said, look, go, go. And he went out. And you know where he went out? He went to one of the largest churches in Accra. Big church. And the pastors welcomed him because they had been breaking my legs. So they welcomed him and immediately they put him up on stage and said, you can lead worship and you can lead prayer in this church. So straight from the Lighthouse Park, which was a small group of nursing students and nursing whatever, you know, he moved straight onto that platform and he was in the biggest church in Accra, you know, and he was leading prayer leading worship, leading whatever. So it looked as though he had got a fast track approach to the highest position of whatever. No problem. After a few months, we became doctors. Then they said to him, "Uh, uh, if you want to be leading worship and prayer and so on, you have to go to our Bible school. You see, he was a doctor. He was you have to go to our Bible school for two years or three years and he, he put two and two together he realized that he cannot also go to the Bible school he was, he was a doctor on his way somewhere so he said ah, sorry if you can't listen you cannot be so off then here he was in the midst of the congregation many 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 years have gone by today he's not even a worship leader he does not lead prayer anywhere he does not do anything he's just a member it's nothing and here he was at my right hand side many years ago years have gone by but it looks as though there is a faster quicker easier it's like let me get away from this funny person who seems to be a problem to me let me tell you if you have a problem with the person who has been set over you you have a problem with me and if you have a problem with me you have a problem with the lord if i put you under pastor richard and you have a problem with pastor richard you have a problem only that you've not had the opportunity to manifest those things to me Oh, yeah. If I put you under Pastor Robert and you have a problem with Pastor Robert, you would miss you have a problem with me. Only that I haven't brought myself to directly interact with you. But if I directly interact with you, you will bring those things on me. And people think that there is a fast way to up there. There is no fast way anywhere. David was very wise. When Saul was there, people stood by him and said, Saul was lying there asleep. And David was there. And David was a warrior. He was betrayed. And some, someone had already anointed him that he was going to be king. And people said, Kill him. Kill him. Kill him, you become the king now. Everybody will accept you. Kill him. God himself has delivered you. David was not a fool. He said he knew that there is no quick way. If I think this thing is a fast track approach to becoming something, without that authority, without the natural process of time, coming in through the door as a shepherd is not a thief coming through the window, coming through the normal route that you are supposed to come, you will never last. I said you will never last. And that is why in this church, if you are not prepared to go through and you are not prepared to obey instructions and you are not prepared to be loyal to the pastor that is there over you there, then you are not loyal to me and you are not loyal to the Lord. And that you are rather trying to shake the system and fight against authority. Listen to me, for many years I've been, I've been a pastor. Sometimes there are people who think that they can deal with me directly and bypass 
whoever is there. There is nothing like that. I'm not a fool. If I bypass people, I'll, the whole system is going to be co- complex. If I put somebody somewhere, it means I trust the person there and I'm not going to go behind the person's back and start undermining him. That means I want to destroy my own church. It means I want to destroy my own church. So if you are in this church and you are here, do not be deceived by the devil. There is no fast way to become a bishop. There was a pastor with us so many years ago and he, he, said, he said, I'm going to show you in six months. And when he left us, he tried to start a church in London, tried to start a church in Lome, tried to start a church here, tried to start a church here. Today, as we are standing, after many years, he's still standing alone in his classroom there. I said, it's not easy to be in my position or to be where I am or to replace me or even to be like me. You don't know what road I've come to be walk before I am standing where I am today. There is nothing like a fast approach to ministry. And anybody who is not prepared to go through the mill step by step, your days are numbered. I say your days are one, two, three, four, numbered. And at a point, you will be exposed. The prodigal son, when he went initially, it looked as though he was really making it big time. It was just a matter of time. When the years went by, we realized that, we realized that he, was, he was nothing. Amen. So church, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. One of the senior pastors in our town, he got into so many problems. And one day, I was somewhere. And this pastor was in all kinds of situations. And I was, I was there and I was with about eight senior pastors of the big churches in Accra. And they were talking about this other senior pastor. And they were laughing at him. And there was one particular guy. You see, I think maybe they felt that because it seemed as though he was coming down, they would go up. And there was one particular guy. I was sitting here. And he was sitting over here. And we were in a hotel room. And he was coming over to pick some biscuits from this side. And he was laughing. He said, ha, 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 the guy, even he, he, he can't, he's not going to survive. This and that, that. And he was laughing. And as he crossed over, he was wearing a long shirt that goes down. I pulled his shirt. I said, I pulled his shirt. I said, careful now. I said, you have not reached where he's reached. Don't think that because it looks like he is down, you are going up. You are going nowhere. People's going down does not make you go up. If you think that when I am down, you will be up, it's not true. Me down is not you up. Me down is me down. And if you are also down, we are all down. My going down does not displace you upwards. People think that if lighthouse is destroyed, their church will grow. There's nothing like that. They fought the church and fought the church and fought. It doesn't make their churches grow. Fought and fought and fought and fought. It doesn't make the church grow. No. There is a line that God has ordained. Anybody who goes outside that line, you will never prosper. It's not that I've cursed you, but you've cursed yourself. I want to show you an example in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Turn to Second Kings. Chapter 11. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. If you have a problem with God's method of doing something, you have a problem with God. Now, if God has set in the church a method and He says that submit, even in Lighthouse, if we have churches and I have Pastor Joel in America and I have people under Pastor Joel and you have a problem with Pastor Joel, you have a problem with me and with God. That is the reality. That is the reality. And, and I want you to know that if you have a problem with that system and with that order, because God has set order in His church. Jesus said, if you receive me, if, if he that receiveth you, receiveth me. If you reject the one I sent, you reject me. It's God's order like that. If you receive Pastor Robert, you've received me. If you receive Pastor Jonathan in Zurich, you have received me. If you receive Pastor Joel in America, you have received me. If you receive Samuel in Alton, you have received me. But if you reject him, you've rejected Pastor Jonathan in Zurich. And you've rejected myself. And you've rejected Pastor Richard. That is what it means. It doesn't mean anything else. It means you have rejected the chain of authority that is there. Nobody can, nobody can be, say that I am an enemy of Pastor Richard, but I love the bishop. Rubbish. 
I said rubbish with capital R. I, I get on with Pastor Richard, but I don't get I, I get on with the bishop, but I don't get with Pastor Richard. There's nothing like that. I'm not a fool. To have built over 200 churches in 25 different countries, you must have known that God has given me a little wisdom to know what I'm doing before I get starting to undermine people and starting to destroy myself in the ministry. No. You must give me a little credit for that. I said, you must give me at least a little credit for that. Yeah. For all these years. Amen. If you go outside God's prescribement and say, God, I said, this is the road. And you say, this road is too long. There's a short one here. I'm going. On that short road, it will look as though you are going faster. But soon you discover that it doesn't get to that place. Look at Atalia. 2 Kings chapter 11. Verse 1. When Atalia, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Atalia, so that he was not slain. And he was with her hid in the house of the Lord six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. And the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains and the guard and brought them to him in the house of the Lord and made a covenant with them. Verse 5. And he commanded them saying, This is the thing that you shall do. Verse 6. And a third part shall be at the gate. Verse 7. And two parts of you that go forth on the Sabbath. Verse 8. And you shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapon. Verse 9. And the captains over hundreds. Verse 10. To the captains over the hundreds did the priests give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. Verse 11. And the guard stood every man with his weapon. Verse 12. And he brought forth the king's son and put a crown on him and gave him the testimony. And they made him king and anointed him and they clapped their hands saying, God save the king. When Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord. And when she looked, Behold, the king stood by a pillar as the manner was, and the princes and the trumpeters by the king. Amen. Are you there? Verse 14. And Atalia rent her clothes and cried, Treason, treason. Verse 15. But Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds and said, Have her forth without the ranges, and him that followeth her, kill her with the sword. For the priest has said, Let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. Verse 16. When they laid hands on her, she went by the way which the horses came, and there she was slain. And Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord. Amen. Alright. Verse 20. And all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, and they slew Atalia with a sword beside the king's house. Verse 21. Seven years old was Jehoash when he began to reign. Amen. Now, are you there? Now notice something. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay. Now when you read this story carefully, are you there? Are you sure you are still here? When you read this story, you realize there was a queen and she wanted to be the queen. So she killed all the king's children. But she didn't see one of them. One was a little baby, one year old. They hid him in the temple for six years. That after six years, when he was seven years old, they brought him out. And they said, this is the king. Atalia was killed on that day by the people. And they made the king, the king, the little boy the king. He became ruler. Now listen to something. Notice. Don't miss this part. This is the, this is the most important part. Atalia, a grown-up, was able to sit on the throne for only six years. But this little boy of seven years, he was more stable on the throne. He ruled for 40 years. <laughs> I said he was more stable in that position. He ruled for how many years? 40 years. Why? Because he came to the throne the right way. He did not come through the wrong way. The woman who came to that throne in the wrong way by killing people was not stable on the throne. Only six years she lasted. It looked as though she had her fast track approach to the place. But six years after she was killed. 
A little child, seven years old, who was playing with PlayStation and video games. He was more stable as the king of the whole country. Nobody could kill him. Nobody could do anything. Why? Because he was the rightful person and was approaching the throne in the right way. But everybody else who came in in the wrong way was not stable. That is why we must be careful as we do the work of God to go about it in the right way. It's not just a matter of doing it, but make sure you do it in the right way. Otherwise, you'll be very surprised that it looks as though you have gotten there fast. But then after a while, it will fizzle and become smoke before your very eyes. Are you listening to me? There is no quick way. Someone said, Ah, I want, to be a, I want to be a great singer in a church. This church, they are not allowing my gift. So I'm going to another church where you go. It will look as though when you go to the other church, when you come and you say you are coming from Lighthouse, they will draw a red carpet for you and say, Ah, we found God. Another one has been delivered from that place. Welcome into your freedom and into your salvation. You are delivered from that horrible place. And it will look as though you are working. And suddenly you look like an important person. Recently one of our church members who was going to our church went to visit another church. Uh, whatever. And when he went there, the red carpet treatment that they gave him. Man! When he, when he stepped there out of our church in Geneva to another church in Geneva, they rolled out the red carpet. Welcome. Oh, how are you? So are you joining us now? Oh, God bless you. You are really welcome. Oh, this. Oh, that. They really, because they were happy to have it. It looks as though he is going to a more significant position with time very quickly. But you watch and see. With time, that fast track approach, you will discover that it's not as fast. Because there's nothing stable that is fast. Even your height, your age, your growth. I can give you hormones for you to become bloated, but you are not really that age. That is why most of the chicken we eat is not normal. It's because it's abnormally grown things. That's why fatty and big, funny things in it. Because it's not normal. The normal thing does not grow like that. You are two years old. Stand up. Clementine is two years old. How many agree with me? Two years. Can this be two years? Can this be ten years? Can this be eleven years? Can this be 12? We all just by looking at her, you know that this body is not, cannot be in this thing in 12 years. I don't think you are 15 years. I don't think so. Even I don't think 19 years. I think you must be more than that. When you just have a look at her, one glance, you know that it didn't take her 15 years to get to this place. It must have taken time to get to where she is. There is nothing fast in the body of Christ. If the Bible says, He that hasted to be rich has an evil eye. Careful. No, I say be very careful. Be very, very careful. And that is why people have become non-entities. Non-entities in the ministry and in life. Because they think that they are shooting like a shooting star to a higher place in no time. There's no higher place. Go and try and see. Go and try and see. People who have gone away. There are people, there are pastors who went away from me saying all sorts of things. Many of these pastors have come back saying that, oh, we want to be related to you. And the Lord has shown me, anybody who comes back, just flow with the person, relate to the person, be happy, forgive the person. There's no problem that we cannot, I mean, solve or, 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 or flow with. You know, there's, there's nothing, there's no problem or whatever. But many of them, you know, they come and buy tapes secretly. They, 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 they want to listen to my preaching secretly. <laughs> they send people. And they ask, what is he preaching now? 100% answered prayer. Hey, can you buy the taste for me? But when they were going, it was like they were going to fast track. After many years, they are still struggling. The church has divided 14 times. And they, they see that it's not a simple thing to be Atalia. It's not easy to be Atalia. Tell someone it's not easy to be Atalia. It's easier to be Joash. Amen. Joash was only seven years old. He was more stable. <laughs> he was commanding the military police soldiers, uh, parliament at the age of seven. He will start a prayer, I want ice cream. And then the parliament will start working. <laughs> I want to poo poo. And then the soldiers will start attacking. He was more stable. God wants you to be a stable Christian, not a deceived prodigal son who thinks he is going into some fast riches. There is no fast riches. There is no fast riches. It takes years of faithfulness. I said, it takes years of faithfulness. 
years of hard work, years of consistency. How many have realized people who said they were going into whatever after some years realize that they are nothing? How many have seen one before? Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand if you've seen it before. It's like we are going, they're going very strong, fierce, Adama. After some time, it looks like they have become smoke. Air. Charlie, have you seen some? Yeah. Have you seen? Raise your hand if you've seen. Have you seen? You haven't seen. Have you seen? Yeah. Miles, have you seen? Huh? Yes, many times. Yeah. And when they are going, what they will tell you, you, you see, that's what I said. When Lucifer was going, the things that he was saying, I will ascend. I will be like, I will do this. Hey, he would think that he's equal to God. Not knowing that he's just at it. When they are finally doing, they will tie him with a chain. Just one angel will tie him. You not use a lot of angels to sort him out. But the big mouth makes you think of so many things. Are you listening to me or you've gone home? Amen. Amen. So you cannot be deceived. Do not be deceived. Do not be. There is no quick way. I did not get here quickly. I've been pastoring. I've been preaching. I've been praying. I've been waiting on the Lord. I've been trying to obey God. I've been making my mistakes. I've been stumbling, falling head over heels, rising out of the dust, rising out of the ashes, going through criticism, various problems, struggles, hurts, pain. What have you? And I'm still around here. And I'm still trying to move forward. It's not an easy road. If you think there is a fast track approach to becoming the king of kings, I am informing you there is no fast track approach. Be very careful about that deception. Don't let that deception pick you up in Pergamos. Don't let it pick you up here. I said don't let it pick you up because it's Satan. It's Satan direct. It's Satan direct. Satan direct. Direct access. I'm getting out of the chest. I'm not going to pay any first and best and I'm going to be richer. It will not be like that. Prodigal son, did he become richer? He became what? Poorer and destitute. Time will tell. One day, a pastor attacked. There was a church I used to go to, a very big church. And a new pastor came into town and he attacked the old church where I, I used to go. And you know that new church, it was so strong and so big. And the pastor attacked the new, the old church where I used to go. And one day I was sitting in the house of the pastor of where I used to go and I was sitting with him. And he said something. He said to me, he waved his hand like he said, even if it takes 10 years, mark it. He said that if you break somebody's house to build your house, your house will also be broken. Mark it. It took 10 years. For 3 years it looked perfect. 5 years it looked perfect. 7 years it looked perfect. After 10 years, the whole thing disintegrated. And I watched it with my very eyes. And I always remember where I was sitting in the garden where he waved his hand and he prophesied. He said, you mark it. You will see. You will see it. And it happened. As the thing just broke like that. And I said, what? It's not happening. It was happening. There is no quick way don't break somebody to think you are going up. Amen. Amen. Shake the person next to you and say, look, this one is you direct. The man is must mention your name now. Amen. Now, the fourth deception. Let me give you this deception and we go to bed. Number four. It looks like a possible way forward. Amen. It looks possible, you know. That you're going to get to, like Atalia. She said, I'm going to become the queen. Let me just kill all the children. I'm going to become the, the queen. Why do we want to kill people to go to places? Why? Sylvia, why? Why do we want to kill people? Just before I came, I was watching a film of Patrice Lumumba. Have you heard of Patrice Lumumba? Of Zaire, I think. I say, I, I couldn't believe. When I watched, it was him really. How they tied him. How they beat him. And they showed Kenel Mobutu. What they did to him. They showed the house. They said how they tortured. They tortured and humiliated him throughout the night. In the morning, they took him to the forest. And they shot him and cut his body into pieces. And shared it in the whole forest. I said, man. It took time. 
and Mobutu when he was going it wasn't easy for him it was not easy for him he ended up as nothing you see there is no need to kill to arise and to arrive wherever you want to arrive when you kill and destroy you are not going to be stable amen, amen. anybody here who let me tell you something if you have a problem with pastor duke you have a problem with the lord i don't have any problem with any senior pastor in my city i don't have any problem i don't have a, that's one of the i believe that is one of the reasons why god blesses me oh yeah i honor all of them and i flow i don't fight them i praise them i encourage them i bless them i give them money i honor them i help them i say positive things about them in my church I say positive things about them in my pulpit. Sometimes when I am even encouraging Orangus to leave the church, I give them the address of all those churches where they can go. So that these are all good churches with good pastors. You can go to all these. Recently, I gave them a list of churches. I said, all these churches are near us. If you don't like the church, go to... I give them address of all. I said, mention, these are all good churches with good pastors. You can go to any of them. Yeah. Rather than staying and spoiling our system. Just go to where and be happy. If you have a problem with the man that God... What did God say about Samuel? When the people said, give us a king, Samuel was so depressed. He came and cried, oh God, they have rejected me. They have rejected my family. They have rejected my children. God said, shut up, Samuel. They have not rejected you. They have rejected me. If you, if you cannot accept the authority of a human pastor... You are rejecting God's authority on your life. And you have a problem with that. You are rejecting God's authority because you cannot accept a human being. Because of pride and independence. You cannot accept a human being. And you cannot be ministered to by God. Because God is not ministering through angels. He is ministering through human beings on this earth. And if you can't receive from a human being, you will receive nothing. Jesus said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Blessed is he that is not. He came in the form of this earthly vessel to minister. If you can't take it, you can't have it. If you want God to appear, that's why when, when the, the rich man in Lazarus, he said, send Lazarus, send Lazarus from the dead. And they told him, if you will not receive the prophets and all the people that have sent, he will never believe when somebody rises from the dead. If you cannot accept a man that is set over you, you cannot accept my leadership, my authority, or the authority or the leadership of a pastor that is set over you. You cannot accept God's authority. That's what it means. If you have a difficulty with that, you have a difficulty with God. Because God's method is not through angels. It's through weak people like me. Mortal like me. Mistake makers like me. Sinners like me. Flesh like me. People who are not well. People who are not doing well. Those are the people that God uses. Yeah. You'll be surprised. And if you can't accept it, you can't have God. Keep on watching. I said keep on watching. If you can't accept a man, you can't accept God. Because God comes through a man. And he will humble you to receive from that man. And to be led by that man. And if you can't be led by that man, and you can't receive from that man, you can't receive from God. And you stay outside. That is why sometimes children receive most because when they see a man, they don't think of so many things. They just receive. That's why when I pastor and I preach and I go to visiting church, I have more miracles, more. Number. No, verse 12. But as many as receive him, to them he gave them power. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, yeah. Hear me and hear me well. Because God is trying to deal with us. In this area. Amen. The next one, it looks like a possible way. Number, that's what? That's number four. I've given you three. The fourth one is that it looks like a possible way. The fifth way is like it looks like the right thing. When, 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 when Lucifer was trying to ascend to the throne of God, what was happening? It looked like what? A possible way to the throne. Because he said, I will ascend. It means that 
he had seen the possibilities. It looks like it's possible, Kuma, for you to rise in the church without submitting yourself to the authority that has been given. It looks possible, yes. It looks possible, but you will find out that it's not possible. That's why Satan said, I will arise, because it looked possible. That's just that I will arise. Amen. The next one, it looks like the right thing. Amen. When, somewhere, when Absalom was attacking his father, why did he attack his father? Because his father was not delegating people to solve problems in the, in the nation. Second Samuel chapter 15 verse 1. And when he was not solving problems, it looked as though it was the right thing to attack him and to remove him. Many times when people are doing the wrong thing, it looks like the right thing. Yeah, because he's preached this sermon three times. We've been in the church all these years. It's the third time he's preaching this sermon. We know this sermon. And we can't be in the church and receive the same sermon three times. It's not right. He has forgotten that he preached it last week. So it looks like it's the right thing to correct it. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm going to sort it out. And you start meeting with people to try and See, don't you think that we have to see a uh, pastor and suggest, suggest to him that he should improve his sermons or he should now you know, bring some more visitors, visiting ministers. And we are tired of his, 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 his preaching. There's something wrong with you. It looks like the right thing to do. There is nothing right about attacking or trying to pull down the legs of your pastor. There is nothing right. The people... I remember one reporter in Ghana, he said, my aim is that anybody who goes to, he mentioned a particular church, will feel embarrassed to go to that church. He said, I am going to expose this pastor. I am going to, I am going to bring him to his knees because he's a crook. That was his vision. And when you put two and two together, it looked as though what he was saying was right. And he was going to expose. Be careful. I said, be very, 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 very careful of what you think you are doing that is right. You will discover some fire that will discover you. You will be surprised. God told Miriam, were you not afraid? Were you not afraid? Were you not afraid to speak against Moses? Were you not afraid to sit in your private house? Were you not afraid? 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 Criticizing Moses for having married an Ethiopian woman. He said, were you not afraid? Were you not afraid? You should have been afraid. But it looks like the right way. Because Moses has married an Ethiopian. He was not supposed to marry an Ethiopian. And it looks like the right way. Or better. Amen. Why should you marry an Ethiopian when you are a Jew? Bishop is preaching and we are tired and we have a right to go. And we are going to walk out. There's something wrong with you. It's a spirit of pride. And we are rather going the way of humility now. And you are still in the way of pride. Careful. I said careful. Because we have all gone the way of humility. How many have gone down the road of humility already? Only 14 people. The rest of you receive your pride in Jesus' name. You reject it. Okay. Number six. It looks like an opportunity not to be wasted. And number seven. It looks like... Sometimes it looks like the leader is weak. So it is easy to attack him. Do you know that sometimes the leader looks weak? Have you got the last point? It looks like an opportunity not to be wasted. Amen. Amen. Don't waste this opportunity. Amen. Judas, 30 pieces of silver. He knew that Jesus was going to be killed anyway. He didn't have any money for investment for his future after Jesus was gone. It looked like an opportunity to get some money. And why should you waste this opportunity? So he took it up. Recently, there was a man of God in our city. He went into a crisis situation. And I went to his church. 
when I sat among some of his elders and some other pastors who came from outside, everybody was saying various things. One pastor came and said, this is a very bad thing that has happened. It's a very gloomy picture. You must get ready for a long battle. Things are not going to work out well at all. And at the point I said, excuse me. I said, even though it's not the best situation, I believe that God can turn it around. And God is going to make something out of it. And I told them, I said, me, I'm standing by you. I said, through fire, earthquake, whatever. I mean, I said, tell the reporters to come and add me to the picture. They should photograph me and put me there if they want. No problem. I'm standing with you through the fire. Everything that will come, I'll be in it with you. You can add my name to it. And all the church members were quiet and they were watching me. Everything was quiet. I said, maybe some of you don't understand what I'm doing. Sometimes it looks like though the leader is weak, so that's the time to turn against him or that's like you, we, we, can, we, can, we can sort of make a move and, and you know the person is already destabilized don't make that mistake don't make that mistake the apparent weakness sometimes is the, is the strength or is the step to the strength of that person when Judas looked that he was down Jesus looked that he was down he was rather on his way up never make that mistake amen Ma- amen Never make that mistake of being disloyal when you are dealing with a leader and it looks like he's weak. There are people who felt that, eh, after all, there's no, everybody has left the church in Geneva, so we are also going to leave. Uh, everybody has left, and nobody is paying first and best, so we will also not pay. After all, it's nothing. It's not a man of God. The church is not working and so on. And it looks as though he's weak. And so they join against. <laughs> but it's not weak. Through these persecutions, I have become stronger. We have become more mature. We have become more seasoned. We have become more humbled. We have been made into better Christians, better leaders, better pastors. God has used all these things to help us to be more stable. So God has used, been using you. And you rather thought one was weak and you are fighting us. Nobody should think that Pastor Robert is weak. If you come to the Geneva Church and you don't see as many people as you would have liked to see, don't think that Pastor Robert is weak. It's not weak at all. It's not weak at all. The strength is not determined by you are seeing seven people or seventy people or hundred people there. Don't think so. The church, you see, you may not know, Lighthouse is stronger in Switzerland than it has ever, 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 ever been. We are at a camp meeting, oh. We are at a camp meeting. We never used to have camp meetings. Now the camp meetings are beginning to get more and more. More and more people are being saved. God is blessing us. We are moving from victory to heights. But people don't even know. Our church is becoming more stable. Geneva, Lausanne, this, that, whatever. Lausanne, you had more, more than 50 people last week. Is that not so for your baby, when you had a baby dedication? Yeah. Powerful. If people don't know. <laughs> we are stronger than our income is higher than it has ever been since the church began. In Switzerland. People don't know. We are very, but you see, at the point you look as though you are, you are weak or that you are now. And people at that point decide that they are going to betray you or they are going to fight against you. And there's a flaw. Nobody is on his side. But the nature of God would make you be on the side and say, I'm with you. Count on me. Add me to the fire. I'm standing with you there. I will take it with you fully. That is a loyal person. But many people think that in the time of weakness, I will be against him because God even has left him. When Jesus cried on the cross, My God! My God! People were, people were deceived. When he said, My God! My God! Why has that forsaken? It was like, even God has even left the ministry now. God has left. There is nothing left. And that's why they took him and they pressed him. And when he was tested, they gave him vinegar. And he said, My God! My God! Jesus suffered rejection for all of us. But it was prophesied. It had to happen. So that he will receive the greatest rejection even from God. So that we can come and place our rejection and depression at the cross and receive acceptance from God. But people didn't know. They thought it was the weakest moment. But thank God for Mary Magdalene. You see, that's why sometimes God uses, God uses people who people don't regard. That's what, Mary Magdalene was standing at the cross. You can say anything about Mary Magdalene. You can say she was a bad woman. You can say she was a drug addict. You can say she was a prostitute. You can say she has slept with too many men. Okay, I'll get you. Move. I don't know Jesus. No one knew him. But Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. I said Mary Magdalene. And Mary the mother of Jesus. And John the beloved disciple. They were there. 
in that difficult time. Everybody else left. Because it looked as like he was weak. <laughs> I thought he was down. How do you stand with somebody who is down? How do you support something that's not working? How do you finance something that has finished? How do you help someone who has no hope? Who has even started from the cross? He said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We can all see that even God has left him. No angel has appeared, nothing has happened. Why should we help that thing? Thank God that Mary Magdalene did not withdraw. Mary, the mother of Jesus, did not withdraw. John, the beloved, did not withdraw. That is why God gave him the revelation. Any person who God loves and is close to God, God gives him revelations. The two things that were said about Daniel and John. Daniel, the angel appeared and said, you are greatly loved of God. John was called the beloved. Both of them were given revelations, visions of heaven, Jesus. Vision of, it is because they were close to God. And they had a special relationship with the Lord. Amen. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Don't think that anybody is weak. Oh, there are times that I look weak. There are times that I'm sick. There are times I pray for people. I myself, I'm a sick man. Sometimes I watch people getting healed, and I say, "You, the sickness that you are being healed, I'm suffering from that one." As I'm talking, as I'm standing to talking to you right now. Oh yes, it looks as though we are weak. When Catherine Kuma was ministering, she was even dying. Nobody knew. She was suffering from congestive cardiac failure, mitral valve incompetence, various uh, cardiovascular problems. She was dying, but she was minute. She looked weak, but the anointing was upon her. Don't turn against because it looks weak. You will find out that you turn against God. Don't be deceived because God takes that person to the moment of weakness only to bring him out at the top. Can I have an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number one, it looks like an easy way. Number two, it looks like what? A quick way. Was it quick? Is there a quick way? Who should we ask whether it's quick? And who else? Who else? Atalia. They forgot in Atalia already. Hmm. Was she a stable woman? It's only six years she lasted. After six years, the church members said, we don't like a woman pastor again. Go. And she was gone. And he brought a seven-year-old boy to come and rule over them. He came to play video games and they said, we like it. This is what we want. We want a child. Because he is the right way. He is the real person who should have been. He is passing through the right channels to be where he is. If you are not prepared to go through, then you are not prepared to be there. Amen. The next one is what? It looks like a nice... Pressurable way that this man will not be over you, isn't it? <laughs> to give you all sorts of problems. <laughs> How many feel that this man should not be over you? When God took David to the palace to learn how to be a king, what was the treatment that Saul gave him? He threw the spear at him. That's my training. Yes. They chased him for 40 years. He was carrying anointing to be king. They chased him for 40 years. But do you know why his throne is the most... They, they call the Israel star, the star of David. Do you know why David's throne is the most permanent throne? Because he went into the throne in the most appropriate right way. He earned it for 40 years of testing. He walked the right walk. Until he entered that high place. That's why there is no king like David. Even Solomon. It's called the throne of David. He said, I will exalt even Jesus Christ is to come through that line. Because he earned it. And he never shifted to the right. But came into that place in the right way. I see you coming. I said, I see you coming. In the right way. Amen. Next one. It looks possible, isn't it, for Satan to do what? To go, to overthrow God. Can Satan overthrow God even for one half of a second? God said, you've forgotten that I created you. You forgot. Next one. It looks like, sometimes it looks like the pastor is wrong. And the right thing is to do this or that. Is that not so? So we are going to, Sort him out. Hmm. We're going to sort him out. 
Because it's the right thing. And I know that I'm right. When Absalom was fighting David. Abita, when Absalom was fighting David, it looked like the right thing. Because David was not delegating people. Amen. It looked like the right thing. Careful. Tell the person next to you, careful now. Next one. Opportunity not to be wasted. Man. Judas had the real opportunity. And what's the last one? When Jesus was being arrested, was he not weak? It's the right time to turn against him. In your life, you will see many pastors who will look weak. I met somebody who is on the board of directors of Benny Hinn. He has just three, three, he had three members of the board of directors. And the person told me, Benny Hinn has hired a lawyer permanently to fight legal cases. Because he has so many court cases. People suing him everywhere. Yeah, he has to have a full-time lawyer to defend him. All the time. Like if somebody, he prays for some person falls down, something happens, or somebody said, I thought I was healed because of that. I didn't take my medicine. I'm, I'm taking it to go. So many things. A superfly wanted to move around. And it looks at times that Benny Hill is weak. Ben his pastors rebelled against him in his church. Probably more than once. Fighting him. And you look, Benny Hill anointed. You see that? So when you see the person close range, you say that he's just a, he's just a man. It's just a normal person with a lot of normal problems like everybody else. So you would think that you can... Somebody told you that you need to be slapped. You need to be slapped. Because you can see that the man has got a pot belly now. And he's just a normal man. So you are telling a great man of God that you need to be slapped. Careful. I say careful. Never let an appearance of weakness deceive you. Never let an appearance of weakness deceive you. Don't be moved by sight. Move by principle. Move by what you know is right. And God will forever reward you. Amen. Stand to your feet. We believe you have been blessed by this powerful teaching by Bishop Dark Heward Mills. For further information on Bishop Heward Mills' books, tapes, CDs, and DVDs, please write to Vision Bookshop, PO Box KB114, Kolebu, Accra, Ghana, or call 021-249-871. That's 021-249-871. Email visionbookshop at darkheawardmills.org. God richly bless you.